Hi, welcome back. Thank you once again for joining me. My name is Magnus Molinet. This is going to be on my YouTube channel on naturalnews.tv. Now I've done quite a few recordings um, relating to what I call the seven toxic sins. But I also believe, and you'll get this from the media, that I've missed out one key ingredient which I sincerely feel, and obviously this is my opinion and you can do your own homework on this, should also be taken out of your diet or at least be aware of the products that you might be buying that contain it. Genetically modified organisms, or in this case GMO, genetically modified foods. Some people even lay them as um, Franken foods. And I know that recently they tried to um, for Monsanto and other companies to actually produce salmon which is genetically modified I mean playing God with our foods and yet the research is very clear now you may have heard of a gentleman a wonderful man called Jeffrey Smith and he has a company called the Institute for Responsible Technology and for 15 years he has been literally at the cutting edge of finding out more about genetically modified foods so as a quick reminder the seven toxic sins, I'm now going to add to the eight, that I'd like you to remove from your diet or become mindful of this being, or these ingredients being in foods, are sugar, salt, unless it's Celtic, Himalayan or Hawaiian, and there are some other salts out there, but those are the ones that I know are good for you. Pasteurization, raw would probably be best. I'm going to say gluten, but usually a lot of grains, so that's barley, wheat and rye. A lot of people listening to this recording, I believe, are intolerant to gluten. It's very damaging for here, very damaging for the first brain, which is the stomach. Oh, by the way, the picture. This, is, this, this was taken of me um, a, few, um, a few weeks ago. Can you see the resemblance? <sighs> Being serious. Um, the other ones would be soy or soya, unless it's fermented. Miso, tempo or natto um, are seen as good soys, but only used as a condiment in our food. A lot of Chinese people don't use those as a huge main meal. Sweeteners, aspartame, splendor, acylfame, etc. Um, absolutely toxic. So again, if, you're, if, you, if you are a person who buys products, then again, look on the back and see if there are any sweeteners or any um, man-made crap, I used to say crap, caffeinated, refined, al alcohol additives or processed because most people are living a bad, that's British average diet or a sad standard American diet which is crap, caffeinated, refined, alcohol additives or processed. Then the other one, the final one would be processed oils, a lot of poofers, polyunsaturated fatty acids are not stable and they're in plastic bottles, clear, sunlight in, damaged, they've already been damaged in the processing anyway but they'll just be damaged even further um, being sold on shelves. So those are the a quick fast track of the what I call the seven toxic sins. But the eighth one, which I think is just as important, is genetically modified um, foods or franken foods. And as a reminder, what I'd like to do is to run through. There are eight um, currently uh, genetically modified crops, and you can find more information on uh, Mike Adams' website, obviously naturalnews.com, and also uh, Dr. McCullough's website. So soy and corn cottonseed used in vegetable cooking, canola, now canola oil which is like a Canadian American oil they, they believe in the US that 90% are actually genetically modified so unless you find a label that says um, you know USDA 100% organic or in our country you know it'll have the Soul Association um, then you've got a smarter choice to make. Um, sugar from sugar beets, Hawaiian papaya, some varieties of zucchini and crookneck squash. So those are the eight main ones which um, currently have been genetically modified. Smarter choices can be made because if you look at the research and there's plenty of information out there, I mean if you want to search for Jeffrey Smith and the Institute for Responsible Technology, clearly it has been shown, and as I say this information I got from Dr. McCullough's website, that it has a damaging effect but let me quickly fast track to what genetically what goes on with genetically modified um, organisms what they do is they take the, the DNA strand of an organism and they literally bombard it or fire it into the DNA of a plant and by doing that one of the things they believe will happen is then that that crop will be then resistant to the pesticides that they will then put on it such that the organisms don't attack it. Now think about it. 
Mother Nature has two main police force. They're called parasites and fungi. And they only attack crops, or even us, anything living, to return us back to the earth if the host is weak. In other words, if you imagine our soil, if the soil is not rich with all the nutrients required and organisms, enzymes and all the rest, trace elements, bacteria, to feed the plants, then Mother Nature's police force would return those plants to the earth in the format of parasites and fungi. And only once the soil became strong enough would the crops then survive. But we think we got smarter than Mother Nature by creating genetically modified foods. They're not really foods really, but they may be labelled as such. And then by using chemicals. You and I both know that we don't want a pesticide, fungicide, redundancies, herbicides or any stuff like that in our systems because that's not what our body cells want. So just, just become mindful about this. Just become aware that you are voting with where you put your dollars and your feet and what you buy. So my invite to you is to make smarter choices. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can do that by ensuring that what you buy is local if you can, get to know your farmers, and certainly if you are going to go to a superstore and buy something that's got the USDA 100% organic. Now there are, I think, over 100 organisations in the US that are labelled as organic, but trust me, I'm not a doctor, they're not actually organic, unless they have the USDA 100% organic label. And in the UK, if it says organic, it's likely to be, but certainly it's likely to also have the Soil Association um, accreditation. So that would be the final, I would say, eighth toxic sin to remove from your diet. Anything that's genetically modified. And I know when I was down in London, my wife was doing a yoga therapy course. This was last year. And um, just alongside the studio she was actually working, there was actually these massive tins of oil. And I went over and read them. And I was shocked to read that they actually said on there that the oil, which was from soybean oil, was genetically modified. So here's something else I'd like to leave with you. When you go out and have your eat your meals at any restaurant, how about asking the chef or the waiter what type of oil or what type of fat is used in the cooking? Because that is important. Because the chances are, certainly in the US and also I found in the UK, it may well be genetically modified. And the damage it can cause, I mean the research is clearly showed in rats, how it compromises their immune system and leads to all sorts of health challenges for them. And you can also go online and find out more information about that. So I know this is a very biased recording, but I really do want you to find or gain some more information, some more knowledge about how genetically modified foods affect you. And I'm sure you don't want to be a guinea pig, but that's what you're being by not becoming mindful about what you put in your mouth or even to some extent what you apply to your skin. Because again, this is the, the biggest um, organis um, organism on your, on your body. So smart choices can be made, folks. I'm going to leave that with you. Thank you very much for listening. As always, my love to you all and have or create a fantastic day. Bye for now.